I am Netmover Sitan. When we last saw Virgilius, the Red Gaze, he had his <laughs> handed to him by Iori, the Purple Tear, after she destroyed an orphanage. Or to provide a more detailed recap, when we last saw Virgilius the Red Gaze, he was going to visit an orphanage. Unfortunately, to Mary and their manipulator, Yuri the Purple Tear, demolished it and killed many that used to live there. He fought against Yuri, unfortunately, her less conventional tactics and her ruthless exploitation of his care of the orphans led to her being the victor of that battle. Yet she didn't kill him. And it's not just because he can't be in Limbus company if he's dead. Remember, this is set before that game. And to be honest, I'm honestly not... I don't know why she didn't kill him. So don't ask me why, as only those making this story knows, and they're not telling us yet. Sometime after he regained consciousness, he and his fixers were at a restaurant. There was food on the table, along with bottles of alcohol of varying strengths. Virgilius wasn't paying much attention, and when he did... A short, black-haired man in a pudding bowl haircut was asking if he was alright, as he had a worrying quiet. Virgilius wasn't in the mood for talking. The ponytailed woman asked if his mind was elsewhere. The short, light-haired fixer asked if he recognised the pudding bowl haired fixer or if he's forgotten who they were, or even if he remembered how they got there in the first place. Oh, come on. Virgilius isn't wasted. The short, messy-haired fixer, which would be identified as Nun school later, told him not to be mean to Virgilius. Okay, I'm with him on that one. He's just seen many of the orphans and, indeed, the orphanage that they lived in be destroyed for no discernible reason, other than a psychotic colour fixer finding it amusing. Yeah, the trauma was still fresh in his mind. The fixer with the pudding bowl haircut was nervous, as he asked if Virgilius was okay even asking if he was reminded of the orphanage. Virgilius told him that there was nothing to worry about, that he was occupied with a fault, and after a short time, as he was about to continue to drown his sorrows with booze, he simply answered, no which was unlikely to be entirely honest, as he needed little reminder of what happened there. It was just too painful for him. Then the light-haired fixer put his arm around the fixer with the pudding bowl haircut's neck, resting on his shoulder, and asked him what his name was. He answered that it was Garnet. Then the ponytail-bearing fixer thought it was a pretty name, and it was clear that she was trying to chat him up. Much to the irritation of the light-haired fixer, who told her that he was talking to him first, she responded that he seemed too drunk to be talking, telling him that he was scared the lad. Hmm, hard to know who was chatting up who. It could be either or both, considering that gender, as a concept, in that city, 
is implied to be considered a social construct. Well, regardless, she then observed that Garnet was quite green, as in inexperienced. She then asked how old, <coughs> sorry, how old he was. Under normal circumstances, that would be considered rude. But in this case, it's quite valid to ask that. He'd only just turned 20. So, Garnet is a grade 9 novice. Now, this surprised the light-haired fixer as he leapt into it practically yesterday. Leapt into that profession, to be more precise. Garnet confirmed that and even brought out his fixer license to prove it. Clearly, he used to be one that lived in that orphanage and had met Virgilius, considering that he said that it was a long time since they last met. Garnet spoke of his respect for Virgilius, one who did what he could to keep them from harm. Then he said, So now I... And at that point, the light-haired fixer finished that sentence with him wanting to be a colour fixer, like Virgilius. But Garnet corrected him by saying that he's not expecting that much. The fixer with the bob cut and the braid then said that he could dream big as she was lighting a cigarette. Hmm. That implies that there's no anti-smoking law in public places in that city. Well, it's clearly because there are worse threats out there than lung cancer. As for Garnet dreaming big, he's only just started. He has a long way to go before he's that good. And that's assuming he lives that long. He has yet to decide on what he should specialise in. Well, he has a point. As for what he should specialise in, is he Zwei Association material? A defender of the back streets. What about Trez Association? As in those that test the gear that will make the difference between surviving a dangerous encounter and being a splatter of flesh and blood for the sweepers to clear up. Does he have the patience and the precision to be an assassin? If so, then perhaps he's she association material. Or does he have the talent to be the least subtle bringer of destruction outside of the Rhino team? In that case, there could be a place for him in Blue Association. Then again, he might be a skilled gatherer of intel, which could lead him towards Seven Association. Or he might be more skilled in diplomacy and sifting through legalese and fighting through red tape. Yeah, bureaucracy can be a killer even there. In that case, Uifi Association could use him. And that's not considering the other associations that... Well, their function is unclear. Although Hana Association, that's for those that have proven themselves to be the best, as they're the ones that manage the other associations. Well, whatever Garnet goes for, he's sure to figure it out eventually. Again if he lasts that long. Then Garnet understood that if he wanted to find those who destroyed the orphanage and make them pay for it, he needed to get up to Virgilius' level. The ponytail-bearing fixer, she told him that Virgilius isn't out for blood about it. The light-haired fixer didn't consider it to be the best idea. 
Rikako, the braid bearing fixer, was silent for a short while. And then she coughed. Yeah, it's a dangerous enough prospect to consider taking on Tomeri, an urban plague level threat. But a grade 9 novice against Iori, the purple tear? You'd have to have a death wish. I mean, fixers like Virgilius don't live as long as they have fighting battles that they know they can't win. Virgilius was silent during this, looking uneasy about this high praise, likely because he believes that he didn't deserve it, because he was too late to stop them from destroying the orphanage and spilling so much innocent blood. He then said to Garnet that some things are better left behind than forgotten, that it's all in the past. This was hard for Garnet to bear. Or indeed here. He gripped his knees, and it's revealed that he was armed with a chain whip type weapon. He then asked if Virgilius remembered Lapis. He did. He remembered a girl with twin braids. Garnet and her were good friends, promising to meet again. Telling him to go where it's private. Asking if Virgilius wanted to join him to see her in person saying that she'd love a reunion with him, showing that she's back in good spirits and continuing with life, like Garnet, implying that he and Virgilius were the only ones that she ever opened up to. Then Garnet said that all Lapis talked about was him. Mm, that's not helping, is it? And that's considering what happens next. Now I say this because, well, Garnet, you might as well have been using your chain we weapon on him during this conversation. Swinging it at him as you speak your words towards him. Words that are opening up recent psychological wounds. Virgilius declined this offer, telling him that he can go on his own, seeing that there's no good reason for him to meet them in person anymore at this point. Likely because it's too painful for him, considering the ones that he failed to save, the guilt weighing heavily on him. Well, one thing that he's clearly not is a psychopath. That's Iori. After this, there was an awkward silence between all those sitting around that table. Then the ponytailed fixer, she broke the silence, noting the darker mood, asking if they want another round. Rikako, the bobcut and braid fixer, wanted another grilled drumstick with pear-scented liqueur. Nansul wanted a glass of heresake, which is hot rice wine flavoured with grilled fish fin, which is known to involve fugu, or blowfish, or pufferfish. A risky concept considering if improperly prepared, blowfish is potentially poisonous. Although other kinds of fish fin can be used. Rikako wanted some hirasake as well, as what Well, she wanted a small fin with hers. She then ordered a number of other things, with Nunciol advising her to not order more than she can eat. The light haired fixer noted that Garnet wasn't looking happy saying that Reunion should be happier, advising that he drink away all his worries. 
Yeah, tell that to your average alcoholic. See how long that lasts. And besides, Virgilius wasn't in the mood for that. The ponytail fixer then took the and had them order a cool bottle of milk for guts. Sometime after that, in an apartment in that nest, Virgilius was suffering from PTSD flashbacks of recent events. Time lacks much meaning, and entire minutes might as well be hours. And not in a warp train kind of way. That's something much worse. Then his phone vibrated, which shook him out of his zoned out state, where the call was coming from a payphone in District 22. Wait, as in the district that the waxy, fiery angel of death known as the crying children attacked the nest of? Hmm, must be calling from the back streets, as those weren't as devastated. Also, they have payphones that have traceable locations? The one on the other side of that call was Guy's. He was nervous about something, apologizing about bothering him late at night. He went to see Lapis and... Then he was struggling to speak coherently. So Virgilius told him to calm down and to speak slowly. He then carried on with his, well, <sighs> message and, well, his story, rather, and said that he went to see Lapis and noted that something didn't feel right about the place that he was to meet her, due to suspicious-looking sculptures inside and people that looked like syndicate members. One of those attending was an officer of the ring. Ah. One of the fingers, so it's deep that she might be in. And considering that the ring on the hand of this individual shows that they have a high position in the ring, and Virgilius remembered that from the Seven Association Orientation Seminar, implying that he had, or at least did have, an affiliation with Seven Association at one point. This caught his attention. Virgilius asked how many coils that ring had. Garnet answered that it was about three. And this indicated that this individual was a maestro of the ring. Garnet noted that something was wrong, asking what he should do. That's where it ends. At least with this part of the Viathan. Well, considering the image of Ryushu, which showed the fingers. Based on how the middle one looked, it had an, well, interesting appearance. Purple with gold chains. Similar to what Tanya was wearing, implying that she used to be with the middle and that's how their thugs dressed. Well, it would make sense that she distorted as she was like the one of the half of the middle and the south that survived the Black Bulls massacre. The pinky looked like it was big on pain in a masochistic way which would certainly explain the Rusted Chain Syndicate. 
it might be possible that that syndicate is affiliated with the Pinky. As for the Ring, they seem to have a more artistic theme, which would explain the statues at the venue that Garnet was speaking to Virgilius about. And as for the ring on the finger of the woman that had it, showing that she was a maestro of the ring, that's likely the equivalent of a sotokapo in the thumb. Now, whatever reason the ring have for being there, it's unlikely to be good. For the area, or for Lapis. Garnet seems to be proving himself for intelligence work, so he might want to consider having seven association affiliation, or if he wants to be more combat focused, the she association is a good match for him, as he's clearly one that knows how to be subtle and be patient about his work. Virgilius is clearly in pain, but that doesn't mean that he shouldn't be unprofessional. Also, was Garnet in his employ, or was this something that he thought that Virgilius should know about? Yes, there are questions, such as, what was the ring doing in that building in District 22? What will Virgilius have Garnet do after that? What will happen next? Well, it looks like we'll have to wait until book three to find out. Also, those with artistic tattoos or masks that were around the Maestro of the Ring seem to be her personal guard as they look different to the thugs guarding the outside. Wait, didn't Seo of the Kurokumo clan say something about the ring? Specifically about the ring being worse than them? Well, if you define worse as not just getting on with the Brutal discipline. Brutal discipline involving dismemberment. As is customary with the thumb and the subsidiaries. Those statues around that building where the ring were operating. Could they be people that they were made for? Yes, people, as in those that displease them. I read that in a comment somewhere, and considering how much of a mess some people in the Project Moon universe can be, it's probably not off by much, is it? Well, Hopefully book three will shed some light on that. Or at least provide some more info on how the ring operated. I'm willing to wait for book three especially if it reveals more lore about the ring. And we'll find out exactly how they differ from the thumb index. Until next time. Hail the rabbits!